To introduce our commencement speaker, I am honored to introduce uh, a friend, a former colleague, a national leader in Washington. He's the dean of the Massachusetts Congressional Delegation. He's a congressman from the 7th Congressional District. Please welcome Congressman Ed Markey. The graduates and uh, families, congratulations on this fantastic, historic day. Um, President uh, Corette, uh, to uh, Nikki Songas, a one-woman public service juggernaut for Lowell and for our country, um, to my beautiful and brilliant wife, Dr. Susan Blumenthal, uh, an honorary degree winner here today, and to Chancellor Meehan. Thank you, Chancellor Meehan, for your incredible service to our Commonwealth and to our country as a member of Congress. And thank you for your bold vision and leadership for this university. Because of your enormous leadership and your talents, there is no doubt that University of Massachusetts at Lowell is now a world-class institution. The diplomas today can take any of these graduates any place in the world. I am honored to be here today to introduce my friend, Interior Department Secretary Ken Salazar. He is the protector in chief of America's great outdoors. He is the chief executive officer of the renewable energy revolution unfolding on our public lands. He is our chief safety officer, ensuring that our country never again endures another BP oil spill. Leading a force of 70,000 strong at the Department of Interior, Secretary Salazar has protected our deepest connections to our ecological history, guarding the Grand Canyon and our other treasured places. And he is promoting our economic future, paving the way for tens of thousands of megawatts of wind and solar energy to be built on our public lands and off our shores. And he is the man who finally said yes to Cape Wind off of the shores of Massachusetts. When Ken Salazar, when Ken Salazar successfully ran to become Colorado's United States Senator in 2004, his campaign slogan was fighting for Colorado's land and water and people. His fight has never stopped, but he now does it on behalf of every single American. He stands amongst the finest names to hold this position, like Bruce Babbitt and Stuart Udall and James Garfield. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming this year's commencement speaker, the guardian of America's public lands, the champion of our clean energy future, the Honorable Ken Salazar, our United States Secretary of the Interior. Thank you very much, Congressman Markey, my wonderful and great friend. Uh, and good morning to all of you, to the graduates, to the parents, the families, friends, faculty, and honored guests. Uh, thank you to Chancellor Meehan and to uh, Congressman Sangas and to the Board of Trustees, the faculty, the administration, and all of you who are here. Uh, I suppose that some of you might wonder, well, what does this uh, honorary doctorate degree mean? You know, my mother last night, as I was talking to her on the phone, she said, does that mean that I can now go and see you as a doctor? Well, I think what it means to me is that now I am a forever river hawk, just like all of you. It means, it means that yes, I know that this year you were one goal away from getting to the frozen four, but next year you're going to get there as river hawks. And it means that every time that I see Marty Meehan going out there and saying, we need to make sure that we create opportunity for all of our young people in America to come to UMass Lowell, and so I need a contribution from you that he is building, with all your help, one of the finest world-class universities in the world. That's the Riverhawk spirit. 
And more importantly, frankly, than the honors that I receive and that we will hear today, really is all of you. Uh, it is this community of Lowell, and it is the graduates. It is a great diversity that I see in front of me here today on the faculty as well as among the graduates and the families, because you stand really for the proposition that we in America are on a march towards a much more perfect union. And we embrace the ethic here in the United States and here in Massachusetts and here at UMass Lowell that an inclusive America that includes everybody is a stronger America, that we celebrate the diversity of the United States for its great strength. We don't just tolerate it. And you are the living example of that. Yesterday, I had the honor of spending the afternoon with Congresswoman Sangas and Chancellor Meehan and leaders from the community around Lowell and Massachusetts. We tour toured the city of Lowell. We walked along the beautiful riverbanks, and we took the old trolley. We saw the historic mills at the Lowell National Historical Park, and we saw your world-class university up close. And from this day forward, I will tell the people wherever I go across this great country of ours that the world should see what they are doing in Lowell, the city, the university, the National Historical Park. They are great examples for all of America in educational excellence, in historic preservation, and in economic development and creating jobs in America. And that great example that I will brag about, you river hawks all over this country, is an example that is anchored in the history of this community and this place. For much of its time, before all of you who are graduating today, or at least some of you, knew the 1970s, there was a time there where people were saying that this hub of innovation and prosperity would die. Lowell had fallen on hard times. Factories had closed. Unemployment was incredibly high. And a lot of people said Lowell's best days are behind it, not ahead of it. But there were some people who refused to believe that. And it included a wonderful leader, a native of this community, Senator Paul Sangas, who saw it differently. In the canals, And it's appropriate that this place be named in his honor. In the canals, through downtown, and in the mills that lined the Merrimack and Concord rivers, he saw great opportunities where other people simply saw blight. In Lowell, he said, we can help all of America, all of America, rediscover a much neglected past. Instead of bulldozing history, which is what some would have done, Paul Sungus said no. He said, let's build from it. He passed a bill in the United States Congress establishing Lowell as America's first urban national park. First urban national park. <laughs> he helped abandoned buildings become thriving businesses and museums and condominiums like the ones that I toured yesterday. And Lowell, with millions of new visitors from around the globe, is now a model for how communities across America can use their history to forge a brighter future. Paul Sanga's vision for Lowell reminds me very much of one of Robert F. Kennedy's favorite quotes. You can imagine what was going on through the minds of many back in the late 60s and the early 70s. It was in those days where fresh in my mind and fresh in the minds of people like Congresswoman Sangas and Congresswoman Markey, we remember the favorite quote of Robert Kennedy. Some men see things as they are and say, why? I dream things that never were and say, why not? I think Paul looked at this city that he loved so much 
And he dared to dream all of the big things that we see going on in this city today, including all of you who are graduating. And today, those big dreams we are seeing become a reality. So as a nation, we can learn much from what is, hap what is happening in Lowell. In Lowell, we see firsthand the power of an idea to transform a community, to transform a state, and to transform a nation. And in the graduates today here, we are reaffirmed in our undying belief that education has the power to transform individuals and communities. For me, as has been described, education transformed my own life. I grew up in a place nestled in the very rural and remote part of southern Colorado. To the east were the 14,000 foot peaks of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. And to the west were the San Juan Mountains and the San Antonio River that bisected my valley. My family had farmed those same lands for over 150 years. My seven brothers and sisters and I grew up in that very poor place and we grew up poor. We had few material things like many of you who are here today who are graduating. We had no electricity most of the time, and we didn't have a phone. Although we were poor, my parents taught us like they have taught all of you here, your parents and your friends and yourselves, that even though we were poor, we were rich in spirit and rich in promise. My father would often tell us that he could not leave us a legacy of riches, large ranches, or material things, but that what he and my mom could do was to make sure that we would receive a good education. And he would always conclude his statement by saying that he preferred it that way because nobody, he would say, nobody can ever take your education away from you. Now, each of my brothers and sisters became a first-generation college graduate, and I can truly say that they have been more successful than I have been. And if you were to ask my parents today what they are most proud of, my mother at 90, my father who passed away a few years ago, they would say that their greatest legacy was in the education of their children. They would say that their ch children walked across the stage that they walked across the stage just like all of you will do in a moment, and they received a college diploma. So to all of you, congratulations for keeping that hope and dream and aspiration alive. Now, as you might imagine, it hasn't been easy for any of you, it hasn't been easy for your parents, it hasn't been easier for Chancellor Meehan as he goes out and turns what used to be just a celebration into what last night was a $700,000 fundraiser to raise scholarships to give educational opportunities for others. It hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy. But as you know, with the help of the community, with the help of Pell Grants, with the help of student loans, you are here today. You see, my parents were proud soldiers and servants of World War II. They knew about things like the GI Bill, and they were patriots of that generation, where they truly believed that anything was possible in these United States. Yet today, we are reminded in these times of great debate in this country that there are some in this country who would like to make it harder for people like you and me to achieve the American dream through the education that you have received. A lot of you know firsthand what I'm talking about because you have student loans that you're going to have to pay off. And frankly, unless the United States Congress acts by July 1, interest rates on student loans are going to double. And so now it is our time to let the members of Congress, Congressman Markey and Congressman Sangas are, are already on our side. So we have to ask who's on our side. But those who are not on our side, it's time to remind them about the legacy that you all represent today. 
It's time to remind them about the legacy of Claiborne Powell, a person I did not know, but without whom I would never have been able to get a college degree. It's time to make sure that we make education in universities and colleges across this nation affordable to every single individual so that economic barriers do not keep a single person out. Uh, embedded somewhere in the recesses of my mind is an old song that I would often hear. And there was a part of it that says, Quisiera dejarles a mis hijos lo que yo no tuve. Quisiera dejarles a mis hijos lo que yo no tuve. I would want to leave to my children that which I did not have. For all of you who are here, whether you are first generation graduates or not, that is what your parents have wanted for you, your families, your supporters, your partners have wanted for you. And that is what you should also want for your children and those that you will support in your own life. I would want to leave to my children what I did not have. So to the 2,900 of you soon to be graduates, I pass on to you the sentiment of that song as a challenge, as an inspiration, that each of you seek to leave the next generation much better even than the place that you have inherited. I challenge you to think about the reality within you, that you have the power to transform. You have the power to change the world. Maybe you'll be a teacher. Maybe you'll invent something. Maybe you'll be a great fighter for civil rights in the 21st century. Maybe you'll be the fighters that continue on the legacy of conservation and uh, open up in a permanent way the new energy frontiers of America. Or maybe you will be some of the 40,000 employees which we will hire in the Department of Interior over the next four years. So come and work for us. Come and work for us or the U.S. Forest Service or the EPA or a conservation organization. Or maybe each of you in your own way, in communities across this country and indeed across this world, you will be like Paul Sangas and you'll help spur a renaissance that forever changes a community. So on behalf of President Barack Obama, on behalf of the Department of Interior, we congratulate you all for being the largest class and the greatest river hawks, in my view, yet to come. Congratulations.